Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another video today for you from the Tampa Bay Bucks playbook. Um, I wanted to put together all of my gun type plays all in the one video. So if you guys didn't catch the, the two-part series that I put out, this to me is one of the better uh, passing formations in the game. So I'm going to put all five plays, uh, most of them all home run plays, uh, into this video. So you can check them out all in one place. If you guys want to see more Tampa Bay Buccaneers or you want to see, see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section at the like button. I'll make sure to do that. Other than that, let's go and let's move on with the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off. I'm going to show only passing plays today, only explosive home run touchdowns from this playbook from this formation and quite a few of these you can probably find in other playbooks a lot of them in different names like the buck seams is also called the pa shot seams uh the pa bucks cross is in a lot of different playbooks with a slightly altered name uh typically the uh the team playbook that's in and that's the play that i'm gonna start with today the pa bucks cross this is something that is very unique and beat a lot of defenses we're gonna start off uh, we're going to go coverage to coverage because this can beat multiple defenses and the adjustments don't really change. So a lot of form, a lot of plays in this formation really have uh, similar adjustments. Um, and I'm not really going to change my adjustments based off the defense. I'm starting off on a cover three here, even though that might not look like it. Uh, but ultimately, I'm going to make the same adjustments pretty much every time, which is streaking these inside receivers um, so they can pull the, uh, the defense back. And then I have my choice. I can either motion out Godwin here or I can motion out Perriman. It really doesn't matter. It'll have the same effect. I typically like to motion out um, the wire out though because against man coverage that's going to help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to motion snap him half the time. And you can see, I mean, this just creates an ungodly seam over the top. I, I really like, I prefer cover three beaters that don't cross the field. Like the old way to do it used to be crossing the field. But you can see the, the point of certain routes will really pull the cover three cornerbacks uh, down and, and play with them in a way that other routes won't do. And this one here, you can see how all the movement it's making is really making the, this cover three outside cornerback hesitate. And it's not really having the same effect on the other side. And a large part of that is due to the motion too. Like I said, if I were to motion out this receiver here, it's going to have a similar effect but it's not going to have as dramatic effect. So you can see right here, I mean, this is, I could have thrown to the other side as far as a check down too. It really depends on who I motion. It really doesn't matter because it'll have the same effect. But the real, you know, key to this puzzle is just how crazily and insanely wide open this is. From after, from just about 20 yards on, I can bomb this ball. So there's no real blitz pressure that's going to get there to me within a 20 yard distance that's going to stop a play like this if somebody's running a cover three. Because you can see how he's so quickly open. I don't have to wait for him to accelerate across the field or anything like that i can just bomb it up right away now this play i have cover two beaters i'm going to go over here in a minute this is more of a cover three beater and more of a man beater but if i am going to run it against cover two you can still have success with that all you have to do is just leave uh, Evans here on his uh, drag. I redragged it because it's a little bit different. And now you can see how this B route is going to have success uh, outside. So like I said, this play can really have success. He really can be a home run against multiple different defenses. If I leave him doing what he's doing, it's not as good, I would say, as you can see right here. I mean, I'll, I've got to keep doing that motion, though. But you don't have to do the drag. Like, I put him on a full drag. You don't have to do that. But you can see how it's it's a little bit more effective and just running out of bounds a little bit. But you can see this play can really be a home run. Now, if I were I mean, if I want to really make sure that I hit, get that home run though, I could definitely throw it from the open side of the field. It'll definitely be a lot easier due to you know having more catch and run space. So now I probably can get that home run without a problem. So here we go one more time, hitting that B route, just waiting for him to turn up. Not sure if I have the speed, but eh, we'll call it a touchdown. <laughs> Might have been, you know what I mean? Might have been down to one. So let's move on to the next defense. So in a cover two man, before I move on from this play, uh, cover one man, it'll work the same. I don't recommend running this against a cover zero. If it's a cover zero, a man blitz, I mean, you're just going to want to drag players and hit drags on a, if, you, if you come out in this play. But if it's a cover two or a cover one, like I said, it doesn't really matter. Streak these inside guys one more time. Block your running back. And then I'm going to basically motion snap this guy right here. Go ahead and wait. I'm going to snap him before he gets outside that 50. Because you can see if you're watching this uh, cornerback here, I, I kind of safe caught it as I ran out of space. But if you're watching that cornerback there, that route really does a dirty job on man coverage cornerbacks. It won't if the cornerback gets his hands on the receiver. So like I said, I'm motion snapping him before he gets to the 50. Now he's got inside release. You can see how this cornerback just bites to the inside. I think that's Josh Jackson. I think it's one of their faster corners and better corners. 
um, if I'm not. Yeah, no, actually, it's Bradbury. He's still a pretty decent corner, but either way. So he bites on the inside. Most cornerbacks will. And then if I just time to throw, I'm, I'm leading outside. Now, if I'd have turned up a little bit, I probably could have got more. I'm not going to say this is going to be a home run necessarily, unless it's a cover one. If it's a cover one man, it's going to be a home run because there's no safety over the top. The safety won't be there, and I can catch and run it. But um, you can see how it's going to, you know, it's going to be very successful all day against that play. And the reason that you don't want to let him stop is because watch how this how this uh, this cornerback gets his hands on him and redirects the route. That won't happen in man coverage one. Actually, he gets away with it there. Sometimes he'll get his hands on him and he'll stay with him. It's not 100% when he gets his hands on him. I'll go ahead and I'll see if I can get that look. But a lot of times this guy will will get his hands on him like right here. You see he's got that's perfect leverage. He's probably going to be all over that. So like I said, you don't want to let him get that get that leverage and get hands on the receiver. You have to snap it before that happens. Like I said, that's man cover one. A lot of times you can take that up the sideline with no problem. So the next play um, that I use quite a bit, once again, is the buck seams. Like I said, PA shot seams. It's got different names in it. Uh, but we're going to go, we're going to pick this one right here. And then we're going to go ahead and go coverage to coverage once again. This time we're going to start off with cover two. Because that last play wasn't as good a cover two play as this one is going to be. So this play can be run a, a couple different ways um, against cover two, especially, which is what I'm in now. Um, but it really depends on like where you are on the field. Like I can do a couple different things. I can try to isolate Baldwin's route, uh, which is probably one of the easier ways to do it because b both ways to beat this defense is going to be outside, whether it's Perriman or whether it's going to be Baldwin. Um, ultimately, if I want to, I can either motion across one of these receivers and uh, put him on a streak. Once he's in a bunch, I'm just going to put him on a streak. And then I want to put the X route here on a flat. So I have my choice. I could either do that with the receiver or I can even do it with the running back. If you want uh, to have an extra route, you can always put the running back on a streak, motion him across one time, and then once you motion him again, he's going to go into that same spot and slot. So it's really up to you um, if you want the extra pass protection or not. Obviously, it, a lot of times the extra pass protection is going to be helpful. Uh, but if you're really trying to attack vertically, you can do this because the B route a lot of times will still have success. And then you can see right here, I mean, I passed that a little bit too much outside. That's why I was saying it really matters where you are on the field before you start to play so if I want to you know wherever I want to attack I typically want to make sure I'm from you know f the furthest hash mark as possible so like I said right here if I want extra protection for sending a little bit extra heat uh, I could always block um, you know block the RB route have the same look uh, and then I can, you know, I'm going to have success with this outside route. Like I said, I don't have to wait too long once again before I'm just basically rat catching and turning up the sideline. So really easy play against cover two if I want to run it that way. I can also flip the play and have success uh, with the other route, with the, uh, with the, the wheel route there. Uh, by doing the same thing, motioning him out, uh, putting these inside guys on streaks. In this scenario, putting the B route on a drag would make the most sense because it'll help to pull that cornerback down before he gets too deep on the X route. You can see he's going to have to react to that. And then you have this outside look. Now, once again, running out of bounds is going to be an issue because of the pass lead. But you can see how, you know, you can really hit a home run to either side of this play and really have a successful look. So if you want to motion, if I motion a guy to the line, number one, when I mirror these motions to the previous play and to the next play I'm going to show you, you're going to see how it's going to be hard for your opponent to really decipher what you're running. By motioning to the, to the line, um, that's something that I use on a lot of other plays as well, but it's really up to you. It's, it's, neither, neither one's really going to give the play away. So right here, I threw that a little bit early, but the cornerback definitely, um, you know, he definitely bit on the drag. That's the whole point of the drag. And then we get, you know, with a slight alteration, we get another big explosive play out of the same formation. Now, like I said, you can also do this against cover three. Now I'm in a cover three look, and the exact same principles apply. It does not matter who I motion out. I typically want to try to work the side where the receiver is, though. So motioning him out so that he can basically pull that cover three cornerback out with that same, you know, it's not, it's not as dramatic as a window as the first play. You can see because it's a little bit more basic. With the route he's running is a little bit more basic, and it doesn't pull that cover three cornerback down the same way uh, that the previous... Uh, route does you can see right there the cornerback doesn't bite nearly as hard, but it's still there You know, what I mean it's still got the window So if you find yourself in this play and it's a cover three you can have a very similar uh, look as you did the first play Now this particular play is probably gonna be a little bit better against like a man zero uh, Which is something that I mentioned uh, previously 
um, that the uh, previous plate was not really that great of a Manzir because the route that I was targeting really took a little while to get going. But on this particular play, uh, the B route is going to be very good. It's going to be a much better play. I wish I could block the tight end to make it even better, but I can't. So it is what it is. So like I said, man zero. this is going to be a much better play than the first play because Perriman's route is really going to get open quick. So you can see right here, he just basically beats that right at the side. If it's Whether it's man zero, man cover one, it's going to have the exact same effect uh, because certain routes are just designed to beat certain defenses and certain, um, you know, certain defensive uh, coverages, certain defensive uh, assignments. You can see right here, uh, this route right here. I mean, watch how that cornerback just bites on 19 as he just steps outside he bites down and then he just accelerates right past him either inside or outside typically inside but that's gonna be something that if you run into a lot of man zero blitzers it's gonna be a very easy route to attack uh, one of my more favorite plays is probably the quick hook so let's go ahead and let's pick that first so like I said we got a lot of home run plays in this formation already uh, so to me adding some dink and dunk plays is probably you know smart to do so one of my favorite things to do on the left side here we have a couple of good plays a couple of good possibilities a couple of good opportunities you could do number one the X route I can do two things with him number one I can put him on a streak route and try to get the Y route open or if I think it's like a cover three which this looks more like it's probably a cover two I can just put the uh, the X route here on a flat and he'll get open quite a bit uh, motioning the running back to the line is probably one of the better ways to go in a cover three scenario as well and, and then the, the B route, I typically want to streak him. I just think pulling the coverage back is one of the better ways to go. But you don't have to do that. If you want to make this as easy as possible, all you really have to do is motion out the running back and flat route the uh, the X route. That's probably the two things that I would do the most. Uh, and then if it's a cover two, like I said, if this is a cover two, you don't even really have to make any adjustments. You can see right here how this guy just gets outside. I mean, and that's a, a large part of that is due to the flat route. So let's go and let's watch the replay real quick. So like I said, just the fact that he's on a flat route, you're going to see this flat route in cover two is really going to pull that coverage down a lot faster. And on the other side, I mean, if we take a look at what the other side's doing, uh, and because I have uh, the running back going out on a route, I mean, I don't even think he even got out that far. It looks like he just got stuck. Uh, but you can see typically, I mean, the, the, the cover two cornerback on this side is off way further. He's closer to the 40 than this guy here. He's closer to the 45. You can see the difference. And like I said, it's based off of that route. It wouldn't have made a difference if this guy would have came out on the route quicker or not. But you can see how the depth of those cornerbacks changes because this, this guy's trying to drop down and take away that route. And that's why this uh, this outside corner route just gets going the way that it does. Even though I didn't really have my fastest guy. I mean, I have a good receiver there, Mike Evans. But if I really wanted to, I'd probably put Brett Perriman in there and he would definitely be going even easier. But you can see how, you know, just a simple flat route can really change the dynamic of this play so here we have what probably looks like a cover three that's one of the things about this particular look is you're going to have um you know I, I, like i said i like to put this guy on a streak the drag route really doesn't help considering that pair that the, it's mostly an outside play anyway the running back Perriman, these are all outside routes so i don't really need the drag that's why i like to just pull coverage back as much as possible you can see how right there threw it a little bit late to the running back i want to throw it to him in the flat more i'll have to do that again so i can time that a little bit better but putting him on that streak is it's going to help when it comes to the running back so right here like i said right into the flat don't wait for him to turn up because you can see once he turns up it kind of gets him in trouble then on the other side uh, i mean if i want to work that i could always try to work that flat route you know what i mean that's going to be there a lot of times you see there they kind of drop on it but ultimately, I mean, this, this corner route is going to work well against cover two or cover three. So just a quick look here. Now we're going to cover four um, just to show you how it's going to have that same effect. And like I said, all these routes are pretty much attacking to the outside. So the Y route here, he's getting outside no matter what. Getting bad throws because Jameis Winston is complete trash. But you can see it doesn't really matter what the defense is. Um, these outside routes are always going to be there. So we're going to go ahead and we'll do that one more time. Like I said, I still, I still think the running back's one of the better ways to go. He's a quick check down, get it out quick, catch and run. Hopefully you have a better running back than this team does. That's one of the biggest issues uh, with this team, aside from having a horrible quarterback. Until next year anyway, until Tom Brady comes and saves the day. So here we go one more time. Off coverage, like I said, just pass leading outside. You can see how easily uh, he finds the space in that zone because that flat route just pulls all those outside zones down and makes that play successful. So the last defense I'm going to show this against is a simple man blitz because obviously that's one of the most popular uh, defenses that people run. I just picked a, a random mid blitz, so I'm not necessarily running against 
um, you know, uh, the one that everybody runs. But just to give you an idea of how this works, if you want to put the tight end as a blocker, you can't do it until you motion him across. He won't do it in the current position, but if you motion him across, now you can have a sixth blocker. And the reason I'm blocking him and not the running back is because the running back's the route. If you want to, you can always take the running back away. Uh, I'm typically going to have success with the double drag look. Um, the, the Y route's going to have success. If I really need it, I can do that. You can see he's going to have success outside, and obviously the drag's going to have success. These are just simple adjustments you can make in just about every play. But if you want to hit a home run, which is pretty much the idea, I want to keep the running back. So as long as they're not blitzing seven or anything ridiculous like that, leave the running back doing what he's doing. And by the time he turns up field, because it's a wheel route, you're going to have a home run. Now, like I said, once again, no, not a good quarterback, not a good running back. But you can see how uh, you, know, you can easily have success against just about any defense. So something that I didn't really get to show too much last time, I wanted to touch on this a little bit with the Bucks seams play. You can really create a home run against cover four uh, with that play and the play I'm going to show next which is the Bucks post. The Bucks post is a little bit more set up for this uh, but you can you can create that uh, with the Bucks scenes as well. Let's go let's pick the Bucks post. Uh, like I said I wanted to show it in the last play but I can show it in this play real quick. Uh, but it's against cover four palms, cover four quarters you're going to be able to hit. A, it it kind of glitches that defense out pretty quickly. So all I'm really going to do motion this guy to the line of scrimmage uh, and then I'm going to put uh, this X route here on a flat. You really just need a bunch of short routes, and you can see how you can see already the Y route just totally glitches out this defense. That was not a good throw. Once again, I'm doing my best with Jameis Winston as much as I can, but you can see the way this play starts. I've touched on this before in the past. Cover four quarters, cover four palms. These are not very good defenses to me. That's why you never see me run them in my game plays. Uh, but you can see right as the play starts, look how this cornerback drops down. I'll show how he looks when it, when I run it kind of stock. He doesn't do that. He drops back a little bit quicker. But you can see right here. I mean, he's already open. You know what I mean? Like if I if I blob it and pass lead it out to the side, he's pretty much open within 10 yards of the snap. And this play has all the same cover two beaters like I showed in the previous video. You can make uh, the same type of adjustments. Like if you have a cover two, in the previous video I showed, all you really have to do is put this running back to the line. Just kind of create the same look that I have right now with Evans in a flat, uh, the RB route streaking back, and then the, and the Y route's going to be successful against cover two. So like I said, it's very similar because it has a pr pretty similar route structure. The same goes for cover three. I mean, you can have that same success with cover three. You just kind of have to, you know, create a look kind of like this, kind of like the one I have right now, just streaking the inside routes. It's a very similar route. I mean, it's pretty much all these plays in this book, home run cover threes and cover twos. Uh, you just have to kind of create what I'm doing here. So, like I said, I went over that in the previous video. I'll just go over it real quick in this one. Uh, it's still worth watching that first video, but basically the, the Y route and the A route, you just put on a streak, and that's pretty much it. I don't really have to do too much else. Just motioning out Evans will have the effect needed uh, where it will create that spacing that the Y route has. You can see, I mean, it's just, like I said, this is just a really glitchy formation. So I'm going to end the video uh, with the Bucks Z spot. Um, I really touched on just about everything here. I mean, even in plays like... Um, you know, the mesh is a pretty good play, a pretty good man beater, but I just basically created that uh, exact same look out of the quick hooks. So I don't really need to touch on that. Uh, the bench is something that I touched on in the past. Very simple and basic play. You should know how to run that without me going over it uh, in a video. Uh, and then, you know, plays like the Bucks corner uh, would, have been, would essentially be a pretty similar setup to the bench anyway because they're very similar plays. So, to me, the best play to end this video on is the Bucks Z spot. There's definitely some uniqueness to this. So, I picked a uh, random nickel because um, the adjustments aren't going to change based off of play. Uh, whatever you see, whether it's a cover three or a man, whatever this particular play is, because it's going to be one of those two. All I'm really going to do is I'm going to streak this B route, and then I'm going to motion out the running back again. That's something you're going to see quite a bit, is me motioning the running back to the line. It's pretty much consistent throughout these plays. And then once again, putting uh, Perriman on a flat. So my first read is going to be the flats once again. If the running back's there, if Perriman's there. If not, if you have like that right there, that was a man coverage uh, that I was expecting. I mean, the, the receiver didn't get out as much as I wanted, but he was open pretty quickly. Uh, but that's definitely going to be a very good man-beating route. Uh, and then last but not least, obviously, I put the, uh, the B route on a streak. So the, the man routes are going to be Evans and they're going to be Howard. And then the uh, the zone routes are going to be, I mean, Howard and Evans will beat certain zones as well. They'll, like, Evans will beat cover three, Howard will beat cover two. So there's a couple, uh, you know, different reads that you can make. Uh, the Y route's really getting banged inside, but that's one of the things that I like about this this particular play compared to the other plays is the Y route is such a late releasing route. A lot of times he's going to get open based off of that. So that's why you see I'm going to him quite a bit. I mean, it's not a route 
that typically, I mean, the user's going to fall asleep on it. You can see right here, he's getting open once again. This C route, I'm not a huge fan of those, I call them C routes, but I'm not a huge fan of those particular routes when they're on the outside like that. But on this particular play, it just gets open all the time. And like I said, it's one. I'm not even really looking at the other routes because it's definitely one of the safest routes on this particular play. Once again, here we got it once. It's going to be going again. Uh, but I got hit. I mean, I'm surprised that that wasn't, you know, that could have been more if I, had a, if I had a time that a little bit better. But you can see, I mean, this is pretty much the play. And then, like I said, if I want to steal all these flats, I've been doing that most of this video, so I'm not going to bother too much. I'm just going to highlight the Y route. But you can see, I mean, the way that he runs that route in and then out, I mean, he's just creating so much spacing by himself outside every time that route is run so what i like about this particular play and this particular route is just the way that this receiver just kind of caves in the defense look how what happens when this play starts whether it's man or zone you're going to notice notice this quite a bit the second he just takes once again within 10 yards look at all that green grass you know he's going that direction you know he's going there that your opponent doesn't necessarily know that but that combined with the flat route is just creating huge separation and space now compare that to the other side of the field and your zones and your man coverages are all going to be like they normally are spread out even you know doing their job but this here just because of the way this route is and the fact that it's inside close to the line like that which is rarely found in plays you can see he just the route by itself just creates so much space to the outside once he finally makes that break and he's pretty much going to be gone half the time so i'm gonna go ahead and end the vid there if you guys want to see uh, a part three out of this or more stuff out of the bucks i definitely have more stuff that i could highlight out of the buccaneers playbook do me a favor let me know in the comment section hit the like button i'll do that next other than that thanks for watching man waste it out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below